Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about shells and desktop environments in the Linux world. So the important thing to remember whenever you're going to be dealing with the Linux operating system is that the operating system that you're dealing with is actually a whole bunch of different components that have all been kind of suction cupped and super glued together in order to give you the thing that you consider the operating system. So one of those components that you'll be interacting with is what is called the shell. And so what the shell allows is it allows for for the user to be able to interact with the operating system. So when we're talking about shells, you know, a lot of times you'll hear about something called bash. So bash is the command line shell. So basically, you know, you install Linux. Uh, when you get done installing Linux, you, you sit there and you got a little cursor and you can type in commands. And when you type in those commands, your server or your workstation will do something. Well, that is actually a shell. The, the default one is bash, but there are multiple different command lines shells out there that you can use. You also have something called desktop environments. Now desktop environments is a bit of a precise word for what most of us simply call GUI shells. So uh, again, doing a little bit of research for this, making sure I use the precise words, that's where this whole concept of desktop environment comes in. So there are GUI shells out there. So when we say GUI shell, it's a graphical user interface shell. And what this shell allows you to do is it allows you to right click, left click, uh, double click, basically it allows you to use a mouse uh, to graphically interact with the operating system. But what's important to understand with a GUI shell is that's essentially all it allows you to do. Basically, it allows you to graphically interact with the operating system, but literally, that's it. Where desktop environments come in is all that fancy, nice stuff that you like. Do you like screensavers? Do you like Solitaire? Do you like LibreOffice? Do you like different, different tools to administer Samba shares or something like that? All those additional components, when added to a GUI shell, then give you what is called a desktop environment. So to be precise, when you think of GNOME 3 or KDE or Unity, those are desktop environments, not simply GUI shells. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking a little bit about the command line shells. Uh, Bash is the default command line shell, has been for a long time, but there are actually other command line shells out there. And then we're also going to be talking a little bit about these desktop environments, giving you a little bit of overview of why you might use some over the other so that you can start thinking about this when you start uh, building your own servers or workstations and deploying them into the production world. You may be thinking about it, you may be saying, well, why? I mean, why would there be a thousand different types of shells out there? There's lots of shells and desktop environments. And the reason is just like with lots of things in the Linux world, it's kind of sort of because people can, right? People or technicians have different requirements in their environments. And so like with desktop environments, uh, when you look at them, uh, depending on how complicated the desktop environment is, it may require more or less resources, right? So if you want things to fade in, you want things to fade out, you want all kinds of cool graphics to happen, that actually requires CPU cycles, it requires RAM, it, it requires a uh, graphics processing. So if you want something to look like a modern desktop computer, you may be willing to, to use those resources in order to make it look pretty. On the other hand, let's say you simply have a, a server and you just simply need your technicians uh, to be able to easily graphically uh, go through and make sure files and folders are there maybe do some edits on some INI files that's it so you need to be able to right click left click be able to edit INI files but you don't need fancy transitions and all kinds of fancy colors those kinds of things then you could use a different uh, uh, desktop environment that will require far fewer resources from the system but give you uh, the, the options that you need so these are the things to be thinking about with shells and desktop environments is that again in the Linux world there's an amazing amount of customization uh, depending on what your requirements are so when you think about what your requirements are it may be very useful to change things like these shells and desktop environments so that you can get the results that you're looking for so let's take a moment to talk about command line shells 
So normally when you sit down, you're dealing with a Linux server, you're going to be using a command line shell called Bash. This is the born again shell. It has been around for around 30 years and has been the default for Linux distributions for a long, 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 long time. Generally, if you've used a Linux server, you have used the Bash shell. But you may be thinking, well, Eli, you know, if, if Bash works and if Bash is the default, why would there be different uh, command line shells out there? Uh, you may understand in the, the desktop uh, environment world where there's might be a reason for GNOME 3 versus Unity versus KDE, right? When you're using, dealing with a graphical environment, it may make sense to you that there are different uh, desktop environments out there. But when you think about a text-based environment, you may think, why would there be additional types of shells? And the important thing to understand, especially in the Linux world, is that you can actually do a whole hell of a lot with a command line shell. So there's a lot of things that you can do with command line shells, where basically you can write out things that, appear, that, that basically look like scripts or run a lot like programs in order for you to be able to interact with the system. And so the different command line shells give you different functionality in those aspects. So when you're going to be writing out different things, uh, depending on what the shell is, there's different syntax for what's able to be done, what isn't able to be done, how you do it. And so the reason that people may want to use different command line shells is much the, the, the same reason that they may decide to use Ruby on Rails versus PHP versus another programming language is that they find by sitting there and being able to type out commands, some, some command line shell work better for them. So let's go over to the computer. I pulled up a little website that shows uh, a little bit about five different shells that are out there just to kind of give you an overview of some of the different shells and why you may use some of them, may use them. So I just found this uh, this basic website, uh, techmint.com, to give you an idea of some of the different shells out there. So five most frequently used open source shells. Uh, again, if we go down, we take a look, a bash shell is the number one. This is the default for most distributions of Linux. And so if you go through, uh, it tells you about the different uh, features that the bash shell has. If you go down, there's TCSH, CSH shell. Uh, this is a shell, it gives you more of like a C-like syntax. Again, this is something to be thinking about when you're going to be interacting with your server is, you know, what, what, what's a syntax do you like? Basically, when we talk about like syntax, the language, how are you speaking to the operating system? Uh, and if you like a more C-like syntax, TCSH, CSH shell might be for you. There's the corn shell. I do actually think I used the corn shell back in the day. Uh, gives you some more interactivity, gives you some more functionality that Bash may not have. Then you have something called the ZSH shell. Uh, curiously enough, it appears that Apple is going to be going to ZSH shell uh, for one of their operating systems coming up in the next few years. And again, it gives you some more features and functionality here. Uh, and then you have something called the fish shell, a friendly interactive shell that gives you things like auto suggestions. So that's the type of thing that you might be thinking about with the shell and when you're going to be interacting with your server or if your, your technicians or your employees are going to be interacting with the server, thinking about what shell is most appropriate and will be easiest for them to use uh, so they can go and just simply do their job. But there are multiple different shells out there. Uh, you can take a look and again, you can, you can install them onto your distribution of Linux and play around, though at the end of the day, bash shell is what most people go with. If you decide that your servers or your systems need a graphical user interface versus simply a CLI, then you need to start thinking about what are your requirements for the system to decide what kind of a desktop environment is best for your situation. Is this going to be a server or system that is shoved back in the server room? Nobody's ever going to look at it unless they actually have to do maintenance with it. In that case, you may want a graphical user interface, a desktop environment that doesn't utilize very many resources. And and simply gives you the ability to right click, left click, and do some basic functionality. On the other hand, if you're going to be giving uh, this, this workstation to a secretary or somebody in the front office, they may want a system that looks modern, that looks professional, looks as if you people are actually operating in, in the modern age, and so then they may want a very flashy, you know, very graphic pretty uh, desktop environment. That is something that you really have to think about. I'm telling you, if you give the secretary or if you give uh, salespeople uh, a desktop environment that looks like garbage, that looks like something from 1995, it really will sap their, their motivation. Uh, they will just look at that and go, wow, 
our company really doesn't care about us at all. If you give them a desktop environment that looks pretty and nice, they'll go, look, we're using, any, we're using modern fancy computers, and then they'll be a little bit happier. So that's something to think about. The other thing that you need to think about, again, when we're talking about these desktop environments, these desktop environments have prepackaged software built in with them. And so something that you need to be thinking about is, is what software, what applications uh, are your users or are you going to be using? Some of the desktop environments have built in software that you may want. Other uh, desktop environments uh, may have software that you don't want. So picking ones that have the, the functions, the features, the things that you need, uh, that obviously can be very useful. So let's go over to the computer. Um, I'll show you the web pages for a couple of these different desktop environments to kind of give you an idea of the options that are out there. But again, there's lots and lots and lots of options out there. And if I'm not showing the option that, that you like, eh, I've only got so much time for this video. So the first desktop environment that I want to show you is good old XFCE. So this is this is the plain Jane of desktop environments. It's it gives you Windows. You can right click, you can left, left click. It can give you some basic stuff, but boy is it ugly. And boy, does it look like it's from the Windows 1995 era. But the nice thing about it is it's very lightweight, and so it doesn't require a lot of resources. If we go over, we take a look at the About page, we can see some of the features that it offers, and we can see that it gives you a, basically, it's a very simple stripped down feature set. You get a window manager, you get a desktop manager, you get panel, session manager, application finder, file manager, setting manager, and that's about it. So with this, this is the type of thing that might be very nice Nice. Again, if you have something like a file server or if you have a basic web server that you just want to be able to go and basically go through the, the, the file and folder tree and see what's going on, you may want to use something like XFCE because it gives you the ability to graphically look at your system uh, without requiring a whole bunch of resources. Just realize anybody that looks at this is going to go, wow, that looks ugly and old. Now the next desktop environment to take a look at is something called KDE. So KDE has been around for a long time, and this is a more full-fledged, what you think of as a modern desktop environment. If we go over and take a look at their products page, we can see that with this, they have KDE applications, they have development tools, they have a framework. When you start dealing with the KDE desktop environment, you're going to be getting a whole bunch more than the, uh, the X. CFE environment that I showed you. If we go and we take a look at the tools that are available for KDE, we can see that there's a whole bunch of developer tools here. There's add-ons, there's education and application tools, there's games that, that are included, there's graphics things that are included, internet things that are included, multimedia, office. So all of this will be included for you with it in this KDE environment. So if you're looking to create something that's going to be more like a workstation or a normal desktop in computer, then you might be thinking more about going along the lines of something like KDE. Another popular uh, desktop environment is something called GNOME 3. And if you take a look at this, this looks like a very modern desktop environment. If you put this beside Windows 10 or if you put this beside Mac OS, it would not look out of place. So again, this might be the type of thing that you'd be thinking about uh, giving to your salespeople, giving to your front office people so that their computers actually look pretty and nice. We go over, we can take a look. You know, you can go and you can see some of the screenshots. You can see the things about this desktop environment. And again, it looks like a modern desktop environment. If we go over, take a look at the technologies. Again, uh, things to be thinking about if you're going to be using this for a server, if you're thinking about deploying this to your environment. Again, this shows you all the different technology that's actually built into GNOME 3. And so you may look at this. And again, if you're looking at KDE versus GNOME 3, you look at what your problems are. You look at how you're trying to solve your problems. And then you go through here and it's basically paint by numbers. Like, oh, it's got what I need or, oh, it doesn't have what I need, so I'll either use this or not. So this is another uh, desktop environment that's very popular. So here's a good example of just the overload of options in the Linux world. And again, why people get really frustrated because it can get so confusing, right? You think about shells, even about desktop environments, especially from the Windows or the Mac world, and you just, you, just, you just got what you got. You got what you got. You like it, you dislike it, nobody cares, you got what you got. Again, in, in the Linux world, you can do basically whatever you want. And one of the things that you can do is you can not upgrade. 
if, if the main thing gets upgraded. So I just showed you the GNOME 3 desktop environment, and didn't that look so pretty? That looks so pretty, and that looks so modern, and that looks so fancy. And of course, it's a Linux world, so a lot of people said, no, we don't want that. We want GNOME 2. So GNOME 2, the old GNOME, uh, has, is now being continued in the Mate desktop environment. So a lot of people said, no, we like GNOME 2. We don't want to upgrade to GNOME 3. So basically, we're going to do, uh, create our own distribution, our own variation version, uh, Mate. And so Mate is a continuation of GNOME 2. And if we go down, we can take a look at the different applications that are, that are included here. And this kind of gives you that idea that basically Basically, there's no, there is no one set way of building a Linux system. You really can choose whatever the hell works best for you. Finally, I just wanted to wrap up on the Ubuntu Touch operating system just to give you the idea that there are really just a crap ton of desktop environments out there. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish, if you do a little bit of research, you may find something that works really good for you, but possibly not a whole bunch of people out there use. So with the Ubuntu uh, Touch operating system, so this is a desktop environment built on top of uh, Ubuntu, and it's used for a touch screen world. So if you're dealing with tablets or if you're dealing with smartphones, you may want to think about using the Ubuntu Touch operating system. You can go over, you can take a look. Again, we talk about those apps, those functions, those features. Uh, for them, uh, basically the, the applications or the software is built into apps. So you can have these nice little apps with these nice little tiles and all that type of thing. And so this, this gives your system more of a touch screen look. And so it might be good for things like kiosks or again, tablets, those types of things. So that was just a bit of an overview of shells and desktop environments in the Linux world. Really what I want you to get out of this is just the complete and utter understanding that with Linux, or GNU Linux I suppose, you can customize anything. And, and this is one of the, those issues that a lot of people get into. Is they're used to Windows, they're used to Mac, they're used to, to, to other environments, and they think, you know, basically whatever interface user experience you have is what you're stuck with. But remember, in the Linux world, that is simply not the case. And the other thing that I want to show you is just how many options are out there. I barely touch a surface. I barely touch a surface. So one of the things to be thinking about when you get into the Linux world is not everybody's going to be able to hold your hand over everything, uh, right? I'm going to do these series of Linux classes. I'm going to show you Ubuntu. I'm going to show you a couple of shells. I'm going to show you a few things, but there's a lot of options out there. I simply do not have the time or energy to sit down and show you all the different options out there. And so something that you need to be thinking about is whenever you go to do your project, think about what your requirements are, and then start doing a little bit of Google searching. You may find a desktop environment that is perfect for what you're trying to accomplish. Or again, if you're doing computer science, if you're doing more complicated things, what you might find out is, hey, if you use a different command line shell, you can do what you've been trying to do uh, a hell of a lot easier, right? Uh, even simple things like autocomplete. Imagine that, again, you know, think about that with, with your servers. Even if you have the command line, simply having something like autocomplete uh, in, your, in your command line shell might be very useful. You're sitting there, you know, uh, you know, because with command, like you, with the commands, you've got to type in the exact command. Maybe if you, you forget what you're doing or whatever else, simply having that autocomplete, you know, you start typing something in, then it, uh, you're like, oh, yes, that is what I want. Oh, yes, that is what I want, right? That type of functionality can be just incredibly useful and really be a lifesaver. So these are some things to think about. Again, when we talk about the command line shells, the shells are what you're using to actually interact with the operating system. When you're talking about the desktop environments, you're talking about a GUI shell with all the additional stuff that's put on top of it. And so generally, when you're talking about the GUI world, you're going to be talking about desktop environments. So if you're going to be doing Google searches, Google search Linux desktop environments, uh, and that will give you your, your GUI options. So I hope, I hope this video made a darn bit of sense. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's one of the, it seems like it's a simple, it's a simple topic. It seems like it gets really complicated when you kind of try to explain it. So I, I hope everything made sense to you. Uh, as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you on the next one.